Um, so uh, I really like the subtitle uh, that you spoke, Amy, right before, the making human systems work with natural systems and making natural systems work for humans also. Uh, and so that is probably why I've become somewhat enamored of this little pit, as the old timers call it, in North Cambridge. Uh, or as I like to refer to it, a pit that would like to be a pond. Uh, and uh, I'm not a swamp expert, uh, but I can tell you that uh, this area, here's a great map, uh, Charles Elliott, he did many maps apparently of Boston. Uh, the trick of this map is that north is actually on the right side, but you can see Jerry's Pond there uh, towards the bottom, uh, and there's another pond next to it to the left of it, which is actually where the Ridge Towers sit today. Those are both brick pits that filled with water pretty quickly after the clay was exhausted. Um, Mystic River, right? This is the Mystic River watershed. Uh, the Alewife Brook is attached to the Mystic River. Uh, the, myst the word mystic, uh, is from an Algonquin word, misatuck, which means it, it's not because of mystic pizza or anything like that. It's actually that probably does come from the same root, but it, it means great tidal river. So think about that for a second, and picture uh, your favorite swamp lands, maybe the marshes of East Ham, or if you drive on the Linway Route One A, you see all those marshes, and that's kind of what how I picture this land once was. Uh, it happened to have a lot of really good clay that made bricks. Uh, they pulled a lot of that clay out and uh, they made pits. Uh, and they quickly filled up with water and people started using them. Uh, it was, it's pretty amazing. It was an incredible resource, I think, for, for the neighborhood uh, and probably for the whole city. And uh, I should note that it was tidal all the way up to Fresh Pond, as I understand it. They actually had to put a wood gate or, or dam, essentially, to keep the tides from going to Fresh Pond. And I, I suppose this, this is probably late 18th century or, or, or sometime in the, in the 18th century. I don't know exactly when, but you know, it was tidal all the way to Fresh Pond. That's pretty amazing. So they filled, these pits filled up with water. Uh, people started swimming in them. These are people who probably weren't getting in their uh, buggies or whatever going to uh, uh, Walden Pond or going to New Hampshire Lakes or Cape Cod. There are probably people, a lot of working class people who worked in the brickyards and in other professions in Cambridge and, and this is where they swam. Uh, I spoke to somebody who, a woman named Julia O'Brien who worked at the DCR for many years, uh, retired now, whose great uncle swam in the pond. Actually, I saw her earlier today with Steve sitting over there. She, her great uncle swam in that pond in 1888. That's amazing. And she, she knows the story firsthand, which to me is a, a really cool generational connection. Um, so I will take you through a couple of those stories, uh, pictures of, of Jerry's when it was used as a swimming hole. This is 1927-28. Uh, uh, you can't really count the number of people there. There's probably hundreds, if not a thousand people swimming in there. Uh, and this is now, you know, 40, 50 years after Julia's story, so people clearly were using this for a long time. Uh, this is 1945. Uh, you can see where those sheds are in the back. That's where they dried the bricks. That's where the range towers are now. Uh, and that's where that other pond you saw on the first map it, uh, is behind those sheds, actually. Um, and the city actually built that uh, bathhouse there. Uh, the city said, look, people are using this, let's, let's make a facility for them, uh, and, uh, and they did. And uh, John Fusset is sitting over there, his dad was a lifeguard at that, at that bathhouse. Uh, so there's real memories in this. Uh, <laughs> he's probably saved hundreds of people, I'm sure. Um, this is, you know, some of the marshes still existed, I think. This is sort of in the same era, 1945, as that swimming picture. This is a great aerial, I love this, also from the same era. Uh, the brick drying sheds, uh, Jerry's Pond at the top, and uh, that, that other pit there, actually in front of the sheds, I misspoke, it, I said it was behind, but it was in front of those sheds. And the neighborhood up there on the right where uh, some of us who are here today live, where I live. Um, and uh, you know, the confluence of this industrial usage, uh, the mining, essentially, surface mining, uh, and, and then a neighborhood resource, which it became. Uh, only if you look the other direction and you're coming around 19, uh, let's see, when would that be, mid-50s, now you see uh, a tower and something else going on back there. 
uh, and that is the beginnings of uh, you know, pretty major chemical industry. Uh, and uh, in that picture, it's called uh, Dewey and Alney, but later it's known as uh, the somewhat infamous uh, W.R. Grace, uh, which is famous for polluting the Woburn water supply and uh, asbestos mines in Libby, Montana. Uh, and also leaving some asbestos, quite a bit of asbestos right here at Jerry's Pond. Uh, here, looking from the other side, now it's Grace, and you can see on the right the tanks of flammable something, something, uh, and maybe some pools of something coming out of those tanks. Uh, this I just love because it just shows you sort of the car culture of, of the whole Fresh Pond area, it really was. It's sort of that, um, that outland area where a lot of the industry was located and cattle ranching after bricks and, and apparently, or maybe it's before bricks, I'm not sure about that, and then chemical industry and then the car culture. This big burger thing there, I remember that growing up. Um, it's right at the corner of Ringe Ave, which is coming out to the right, and then the Elwhite Brook Parkway is to the left, essentially. Um, this is today, which is much happier. Uh, this is uh, Earth Day uh, a month or two ago. Uh, people getting excited about how do we reconnect with this part of the landscape that's been neglected for so long. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's great to see people just coming out to clean up literally clean up garbage around this edge of this pond and hoping that one day it can be returned to be a resource uh, for the public in a safe way. Um, and uh, just click through a couple of those. Of course, flooding continues, as, as you all know, and as Adam pointed out, uh, this is from this winter. That's the, uh, not right at Jerry's Pond, but just indicative of, of the kind of flooding that a couple of melts and rains will will bring to the, the brook. Now that's somewhere in there is the is the Elwife Brook. Um, where are we when we're talking about the pond? I'm sure most, if not all of you know where it is. It's at the confluence of the bikeway, uh, Route 2, uh, the T, uh, multiple neighborhoods, uh, about three to 4,000 subsidized housing units in the towers and, the, and Jefferson Park and some smaller projects. So it's really, to my mind, it's a, it's a major environmental justice issue that this site has been fenced off uh, for so long uh, and it's left in the state. Uh, and that's really why we, a, a bunch of us got together to let's try to do something about it and founded Friends of Jerry's Pond. If you didn't know any better in this picture, you'd think, oh, look at that lovely passive recreation area there on the left next to all the active recreation, the pool, the, the ball fields, and, and the football field. But no, it's, it's actually pretty fenced off, and you can't get there. You know, this is actually closer to what it looks like. Actually, this is exactly what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no leaves on the trees. Um, but, uh, and you can see how close it really is. It really is the, the backyard for these, for these buildings. Uh, and to my mind, uh, they deserve a better backyard than this. Uh, something that doesn't say, you're, you're living in this neighborhood and we're not going to clean this up. Uh, it's just going to be like this. It's been fenced off since 1961, 57 years. Uh, I would argue that if there were a fenced off toxic site in Harvard Square, owned by a private company as this is, that the city would figure out a way to do something about it. And so we're trying to muster up the, uh, the pressure on the city to do something about it, and all within the context of how do we make the landscape more resilient. So we're very mindful of a lot of the ideas in Adam's presentations and the presentations that will follow about how does this fit into a bigger context of water uh, in this area. You know, the Mystic, the, the Great Tidal River wants to come back. Uh, this is really interesting. This is from 1914. Uh, it, it's the Common Council, they crossed out the Board of Aldermen, I guess they were short on stationery, uh, didn't want to print new stuff, so it says that the Park Commissioners requested to make an effort to purchase Jerry's Pit so-called for the purpose of using it in connection with Russell Field for bathing purposes. They really were not very good writers, I think. Although I've seen some of the council orders today and they're kind of similar. According <laughs> to this history, I mean. Um, in order to, in the last phrase, in order to instruct children to swim. This is 1914. So people have been thinking about this for a long time. I wish the city had bought it uh, 104 years ago. Uh, it would have not been polluted. But here we are today. Uh, this is a great little graphic that shows that Massachusetts actually is one of two states that gets an F on environmental justice. Now, we can talk about this. There's some people say this is because we're better at reporting it. 
But the fact is that there are environmental justice situations in even in Cambridge, a brownfield in Cambridge. I mean, it's kind of amazing. Uh, the Illinois Working Group, which I was on, uh, you know, said we want to do something about these kinds of things and teach people about ecology. Uh, I agree. Uh, and who likes the Fenway, the Fens, as a as a, uh, a wetland in in Boston? Did, I mean, let's see some hands. You think that's a good yeah. wetland? Yeah. Well, this is what it looked like in 1892 when it was under construction. So let that sit with you for one second, and I think that's really the end of my little bit. But the point is that we can create really great wetlands. Uh, you know, Frederick Law almost said was a genius and way ahead of his time if you look at his writings. He knew about the importance of the connection uh, that people have to nature, and we would like to bring that back to uh, to Jerry's Pond. And, I won't go into these slides, but we do have some very early preliminary ideas of what it could be, but I think it needs a, a big, wide community process. Uh, so this is really just version one of off-road uh, bikeways, uh, walking paths, a more functioning ecosystem, and a place that's accessible to people. That's all.